welcome back to part 2 of House Hunting in Montevideo. If you haven't already seen part 1, it'll be linked in the description. But today, we are going to see 6 new houses throughout Montevideo. The houses range in prices, size, and areas. And just like last time, we will be rating the houses on criteria including location, the size of the property, and the things within it. Natural lighting, practicality, and overall vibes. For more information on what we were specifically looking for, go watch part 1. But for now, let's get started with the first property. This first house is in Cordon, but also right by the Tres Cruces shopping mall. The house is listed as being a recycled house, which apparently means renovated. The house was fixed up last year and put on the market for sale, but more recently became available to rent instead. This house is bright and light and looked in very good condition with new fixtures and fresh floors. The bathroom was on the smaller side but had nice new finishings and used the space well. The bedrooms were both strange shape but reasonably sized. There was also this nook in between the large bedroom and the bathroom. The second bedroom has the same finishes as the first one but is smaller with these diagonal walls. Neither room had any storage built in. The kitchen was also a little small but had a nice big room that could be made into a nice pantry for storage. Off of the kitchen is an enclosed patio that would be good for the dogs and would stop the cats from escaping. There is also room for a washing machine. The house was 75 meters squared and 5 meters squared for the patio and it was priced at 30,000 pesos per month. In case you missed episode 1, we're rating each of the houses out of 35 and this house came out pretty high up on the list with 28 out of 35. House number 2 was nearby on the other side of Tres Cruces shopping mall in the neighborhood Tres Cruces. This is the biggest of all the properties that we have looked at as of yet and the only one that came with the garage. This house has three large separate rooms including the one at the front that will have unique vinyl floors with cream walls. The kitchen floor is also a different vinyl and the kitchen itself is spacious but with old finishes. From the kitchen you can enter the garage which was nice and big and had extra storage which would be perfect for suitcases or a Christmas tree. All of the things you don't need often. The bathroom finishes were not of personal taste, with the pastel orange and the yellow tiles and the green porcelain, but it is just a bathroom. Next to the kitchen you can enter into the second of the three large bedrooms, and this leads out onto the third and final room. All three rooms are connected onto the side of the house, and if only the floors were wooden it would make a big difference to the overall look of the house. Back through the kitchen the property also has a small patio with connections for a washing machine, and these red stairs lead up to the rooftop barbecue. Maddie almost tripped walking up because the safety guidelines are not that straight, but the barbecue was nice and had this prep area next to it. The door next to the garage and to the patio had bolt locks, but Maddie really couldn't get past the interesting flooring choices. This property was 90 meters squared and listed as two bedrooms, but compared to the other places we saw in part one, this one could count as two bedrooms. The price was 28,500 per month, plus 2,000 in gato comunes but I will say that this property was willing to accept the guarantee with Manfred, the company we use, so we would need to reapply with a different company. This next house came out a little bit lower with 24.5 out of 35, but it still did really well in a lot of areas, but the floors, kitchen and bathroom were just really not what I was looking for. House number three was a standout of all 11 houses, and you'll soon see why. This property was located in Positos and is 120 meters squared with two floors and a rooftop. The house is listed as three bedrooms, two bathrooms, as well as having a lot of unique character and open spaces. The condition of the home was not the best as it needed to be patched up and repainted, but they planned to do this before the new tenants arrived. The entrance room had an indoor balcony, tall ceilings and big windows to let in the light. To the right of the front door was one of the three bedrooms that also had an upstairs loft. This would work perfectly as a children's room or would be used as Maddie's office or sewing studio. The house also had a patio that needed to be cleaned up, but the size was decent, and it was full of windows to bring light into the home. Moving further into the home, this could be used as a dining room, and the built-in wall shelving is a nice touch. Heading further back, there is a bathroom to the left, a staircase in front, and the kitchen to the right. The kitchen was nice and spacious. However, the stove would need to go opposite the entrance and block off one of the cupboards. There is also little storage that I don't know what we would use it for other than storing cleaning supplies. This bathroom is a 
guest bathroom and has no shower, but it did have nice built-in storage. Heading up the stairs, you can enter into the second bathroom. Nothing fancy, but it is nice and spacious and has a nice little skylight for additional light. This room here is above the kitchen and can be used as a second bedroom or used as an office space. These windows look out into the courtyard, patio, and unlike many of the houses we have seen, it is built in wardrobe. Heading down from here, this room with the wooden floors is above the dining room and this would be the master bedroom. There is more built-in storage and enough room for a large bed. It then leads out into the big indoor balcony that could be used for a little sitting room. Heading up another staircase there is a door to the rooftop. The glass for the skylight is all in good condition especially compared to the houses in part 1 of this video series. And the rooftop itself felt spacious and well maintained. When turning to go back down the stairs there is more storage here above the stairs just for an extra bonus. Honestly we both love this place instantly but it was way over our budget. This house was 36000 per month plus 2000 in building fee taxes including the bi-monthly door tax and alternating sanitation tax. The house was again 120 meters squared in total and 38,000 pesos per month if you include the taxes. Obviously by now you can tell we were both obsessed with this house, but really the price was the main downfall. It was completely out of our budget even before you added on the extra taxes, so luckily for us someone else snatched this property up that same day we went to visit it and we didn't even have the chance to consider applying for it. House number 4 was in Ciudad Vieja. We hoped to look at some of the houses there because the prices were a lot cheaper. But while waiting outside, for 5 minutes, we witnessed two verbal assaults, one physical, and decided maybe the neighborhood just wasn't for us. There was nothing to rate when it came to this property except the location. I don't remember what the size of the property was or the price, so let's just move along. For house number 5, we headed back to Malin by the Rambla. This place was an apartment instead of a house, and the building was on the beachfront. However, the apartment we looked at was on the inside of the building, on the ground floor, and didn't have any beach views. The house included this red floor patio that has two rooms on either side. This is the kitchen, not the prettiest, but the size was nice and reminds me of a little grandma's house. The bathroom was spacious and fine. This here is one of the bedrooms, the larger of the two, and it looks out onto the courtyard. However, the courtyard belongs to another house. This is the second bedroom, which also looks out onto the neighbor's courtyard. This room is the entrance, lounge room, and was previously used as a home office, so it has a lot of plugs available. This house was fine, but it just didn't feel right, and the condition of the courtyard and the thought of neighbors looking into our patio was off-putting. This house just was not for us. It scored at 19 out of 35. The styling was not it. The windows into the courtyards. We have two cats and two dogs, and I could just imagine any of them ending up in someone else's home that's not ours and that just seems like a bit of a nightmare. I will say we couldn't remember the price or size of this property and the listing is no longer available online so I think it was about 26,000, 26,500 around that mark so it was on the cheaper side but just yeah it wasn't the vibe. The final house, house number six, is in Buseo right on Avenida Italia. This house is further inland than we were hoping for, but it is conveniently right near Plaza Italia, a shopping mall that has a large fresh market supermarket and a Solimac hardware store. The house itself has a small front patio that is fenced in and it would be nice for the dogs. The house also has a lockable gate and two doors before you get inside. The entrance room is two large rooms joined together for a nice light and spacious feel. This room here is the largest bedroom and has an interesting shape to the room and includes its built-in wardrobe with nice bit storage. The bathroom was really nice and a good size and also had nice additional storage. The tiles weren't our first choice but they weren't that bad overall. This is the second bedroom. There was a wardrobe and then if you walk out into the kitchen dining room you can enter into a third identical bedroom. All the bedrooms had wooden floors and you can see they needed a little bit of maintenance and all the windows all had bars and locks for safety. Heading into the kitchen, there was a nice big pantry storage. The green is an interesting choice, but Maddie liked the pink tiles in the kitchen. This door here is a barred off and unusable door, and next to it is in the little nook. Heading outside, there is a tiny patio with a barbecue, and then some stairs that lead up to the rooftop. The security gate just did not match up nicely with the stairs, meaning even Maddie had to crawl on her hands and knees to get out to the rooftop. 
the real estate agent said this room could be used as a laundry but i'm not sure how we would get our washing machine up the stairs to be put in in the first place the rooftop otherwise was definitely interesting to access this house was also listed at 120 meters squared just like the house in Positos, but it had less character and was in a less nice neighborhood however the house didn't need as many repairs to the paint or cleaning up as a Positos house the house was listed at 32,000 per month, but this would also include some additional taxes. This last house scored at 25 out of 35, making it one of the highest on the list. The main thing I didn't like about this was the location, otherwise it was pretty much fine. Not perfect, but the price was just a little bit too high. If this property had been 30,000 instead of 33 plus taxes, then it really would have been worth considering. And to close out this video, this is all of the houses we've shown in part 1 and 2, ranked in order from the top left all the way down to the bottom right. Of course this is a completely subjective ranking, but I hope this gives you a quick little overview and refresher of all the places we've seen so far. And I will say, none of these houses worked out, they were either not quite what we were looking for or they got snatched up by someone else while we were still sorting out the paperwork, so we are going to keep looking again thumbs up subscribe comment down below if you want to see more and we can make a part three don't forget to comment which was your favorite and which was your least favorite and like manny mentioned in video number one if you would like us to view more properties at a variety of different prices sizes and locations please comment what areas or budgets you are interested in and we can contact someone at infocasas perhaps to organize it thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to see more